and I think it's uh, now it's the time to move on to the student presentation. Um, if I may ask if Dr. Um, what was her last name? Yeah, Fairhurst is already here in the call. Dr. Fairhurst? Okay, then we can already move on to the student presentations. And up first, we have Matthias. And as if all his activities organizing the summer school hasn't been enough, uh, overwhelming him with all the questions and bombarding him, bombarding him with all the requests hasn't bothered him enough. Uh, we've asked him to, uh, to give us a talk on his research project, which is very interesting. Uh, Matthias uh, has a master's, uh, master of science degree in me mechanical engineering from the Technical Uni University of Munich. He is a PhD candidate, candidate in camp and uh, camp chair and rocks lab uh, here at uh, Margaret's <laughs> University Hospital. He's currently working on vibroacoustic analysis in the surgical environment and smart inter interoperative support tools based on application of artificial intelligence using interoperative vibroacoustic signals. Um, Interestingly, Matthias has also a, um, as, a, as an intern, has a work experience in, in MATLAB, MathWorks in, in Munich. Um, I would like to invite Matthias to, uh, to tell more of us, um, more about this research project. Thank you. Thank you so much for the kind introduction, Human. And I just have to bring up my slides. Okay, we should be able to see the, <clears throat> maybe you can pin the, oh, yeah. maybe I'm the speaker view. Yeah, you're back. Okay, okay um, so as uh, Human already uh, said before, I'm going to uh, present um, a few of my research works uh, that uh, we did together uh, with the ROX group at Bygost University Hospital and uh, Professor Navab in Munich at the camp chair. And uh, I want to talk about um, acoustic sensing for medical applications and our projects in this field. Um, so first of all, um, I want to start with the human hearing. Um, our hearing can actually do a lot. Um, so everything that we perceive through our ear has great influence on us. Um, the hearing directs our attention, conveys the direction in space, can provide feedback, trigger an immediate reaction, and provide complex information in a short time uh, while allowing effortless interpretation. Um, so I have two examples of sound conveying information. Um, here you can hear a sound of someone knocking on wood. I hope everyone uh, also got that. And the second example um, is a knocking on metal. And um, I'm not sure how well you can could hear it, uh, but if you hear it with uh, speakers, uh, you can actually also tell that uh, the metal is a thin layer of metal that is probably hollow uh, behind. So there's a lot of uh, information in sound. Um, and sound is also used as a source of information in medical applications. For example, um, the diagnosis of lung diseases uh, with a stethoscope. Um, furthermore, many surgical actions produce sounds such as coagulation, hammering, or bone drilling. Um, so our question is, uh, how can we use sound for medical applications and can we maybe even design automated systems to analyze these acoustic signals and take advantage of it? So um, the first uh, application that I want to show you, um, I started at uh, MRI in Munich, at TUU Munich, um, in visceral surgery. Um, we uh, had a project about differentiating between different tissue types um by the sound that is generated when the tissue is coagulated and therefore we uh, designed an experimental setup uh, with a surgical box trainer put a microphone inside um, that mimics minimal invasive surgery and then um, coagulated different types of tissues 
and recorded the sound. Um, so we, for the analysis, we um, usually in, in speech recognition and acoustic event recognition, also state of the art is uh, to use spectrogram Im um, yeah, spectrograms, which is essentially can be treated like an image. I just want to quickly uh, explain how, what it is. Uh, on the x-axis, you have the time. On the y-axis, you have the frequency. And the intensity um, is the corresponds to the amplitude of the, the signal in the respective frequency. Uh, so here you can see the, a sample of a trumpet recording, uh, where you can see the fundamental frequency and the harmonic frequencies, the overtones. Um, so for the application of uh, the instrument tissue interaction, um, we use the spectrogram images, um, use the uh, deep learning uh, convolutional neural network to di uh, di differentiate between five types of tissue or four types of tissue and uh, no tissue being coagulated and could achieve an overall test accuracy of uh, almost uh, 89%, which uh, we thought was really promising. Um, then in orthopedic surgery, which is my current um, direction of research, um, also acoustic signals have been used um, in, in previous projects, um, for example, for workflow detection, surgical event detection, error prevention, uh, for surgical decision support and surgical guidance, and also for the diagnosis, uh, for example, um, for the diagnosis of cartilage degeneration in the knee. Um, so the first application in orthopedics that I want to um, present to you here is um, a project that we've published in scientific reports. Um, the clinical motivation is um, bone drilling, freehand bone drilling. And um, when the drill breaks through the bone on the other side of a long bone, uh, there's a risk of uh, injuring vital structures such as uh, vessels or nerves. And um, the um, the main objective for a system uh, is to detect the drill breakthrough uh, accurate with low latency, and the system should be easy to integrate and cheap uh, to stop the drill as fast as possible when you break through uh, the bone on the other side. Um, so we did experiments with uh, six human cadaver kip specimens. We drilled uh, 136 individual drill holes, and uh, we used contact microphones that we uh, developed, uh, custom contact microphones um, in different positions to capture the sounds and uh, could then show that the um, bone conductivity, so when you place the microphone closer to the bone uh, on the skin surface makes, uh, improves the classification results. And so I just want to quickly uh, show you the, the setup that we use, uh, the contact microphone. It's a piezo-based uh, contact microphone that we can attach to all kinds of uh, objects or uh, also to the patient's skin and to capture structure-borne sounds that um, capture a lot of information, um, for example, for drilling, sawing, hammering. And um, this uh, contact mic is electromagnetically shielded and um, also impedance buffered to get a really uh, high quality signal. So for the uh, application and drill breakthrough detection, um, we used also a CNN-based pipeline to classify or to detect the drill breakthrough events. Um, here, the special challenge was a really unbalanced data set because uh, we have a lot of samples of uh, drilling and only a few samples of breakthrough events. And uh, through the application of focal loss function, we could um, achieve really uh, promising results uh, for uh, in a total execution time of hun around 100, 140 milliseconds, we could achieve uh, almost 94% uh, sensitivity to detect the drill, drill breakthrough event. And a faster version or the fastest version uh, could detect um, a breakthrough with a sensitivity of uh, still 84% in 64 milliseconds execution time. Um, then the second project that uh, I want to uh, show here is a project that has been recently accepted for Mikai um, and will be presented in, in the upcoming Mikai conference. Um, the project is about femoral stem insertion um, in total hip arthroplasty, where um, the 
femoral stem component of the implant is driven into the femur after resection of the femoral head um, with hammer blows. And uh, the opt an optical navigation is uh, not possible to assess the press fit uh, of the implant, which then corresponds to the optimal insertion endpoints or the point where the surgeon stops the hammering process. Uh, over insertion uh, can lead to um, a fracture in the bone, which you can see here, uh, which dramatically increases the, the trauma for the patient and um, the need for rehabilitation afterwards. Um, so we developed a fully automated assessment method um, for the optimal insertion endpoint um, for femoral stem implants. And uh, we also we, we um, attach the contact microphone this time to the inserter tool um, and did experiments with uh, five human cadaveric hip specimens um, and conducted the insertion procedure. Um, the uh, detection method consists here of a spatial temporal model uh, operating on sequences of five hammer blows. Um, and the detection works as follows. Uh, when the press fit, an increasing press fit um, corresponds to um, an five, uh, a sequence of five spectrograms um, that, that show that the model can classify as increasing press fit. And um, when the model detects a converging press fit, we can consider the implant as fully seated in the anatomy. Uh, here we could achieve an overall per class recall of uh, around 95, 94% for detecting an ongoing insertion and around 71% for identifying a reach target press fit. Uh, here you can see uh, a better insight into the results what it actually means. Uh, so the, the bottom line for five independent test specimens, um, uh, the bottom line corresponds to uh, the ongoing insertion and the top line to reach target press fit and the uh, asterisk uh, to the model's prediction. So you can see in, in three of the four cases, the model, uh, three of the five cases, the model um, actually performed really well, but still has some problems, which is also, of course, um, a little bit corresponding to the small sample size. But uh, as a proof of concept, we considered this to be um, promising results. So as a conclusion, um, we could show first use cases uh, with promising results. Uh, we believe that acoustic sensing for multimodal uh, sensing applications um, can be very beneficial. For example, in surgical navigation in workflow analysis or also robotic applications. And uh, we furthermore see great potential um, in, for real-time surgical error prevention. And I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much, Matthias. <coughs> Are there any questions from the from the audience here in the room? <laughs> you have a question? Oh, okay. Maybe I can I can. Relate. Uh, in the, the femoral can stem I, insertion. Should, should the, question. Sure. the question is regarding the, the acquisition of the ground truth data. Uh, for the femoral stem insertion hammering uh, application. Um, so we did a preoperative plan together with a um, surgeon from the hospital here. And the ground truth was defined as the preoperatively planned broach size because you actually, I, I just... Uh, explained uh, it in, in a short uh, abbreviated version. Um, they actually incre uh, hammer in increasing sizes to kind of uh, make space for the cavity and uh, make the, the bone, uh, like the in, inner bone denser to, to increase the press fit. And um, you plan a broach size beforehand. And when this broach size was fully seated in the anatomy and confirmed by a surgeon, uh, who's uh, doing this on a daily basis, 
uh, we considered this to be the ground truth for an optimal target press fit. Yeah. Uh, this is very useful. Could you change the way in which you hammer the, the, pieces, uh, the, the prosthesis and the brooches? Because now actually you have a tool that makes the question that you thought you made before. And what, what do you. So <clears throat> have you thought of using this method to actually change or optimize the way in which the brooches are? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the question of uh, Professor Joskowitz is uh, if this tool could uh, change the way uh, in which the the brooches are inserted. I'm not a surgeon, um, but maybe it. I think now nowadays or at the moment uh, because there's no not really a, a system that that supports the surgeon in this process. Uh, he or she uh, determines the optimal insertion endpoint by uh, experience. So I think especially for more unexperienced surgeons, this can be also maybe a learning tool and therefore maybe also make them, uh, yeah, make the learning curve uh, a little bit easier. Yeah, I guess there's another question. Uh, very interesting talk for things like drill insertion. How much time is there between sensing that one is going too far and actually going too far? How long does a system or person have to react before something bad happens? Um, so in the paper, we, um, we compared it with a study and the, the execution time of the pipeline with a study um, that were that was investigating the uh, over drilling of surgeons in a lab experiment uh, with a high number of uh, different people drilling. And the, of course, we can only detect it when it already happened, but um, the less, the better. And um, I think the, the reaction time of a human is around 300 milliseconds. Uh, if we can do it in a third. Um, there's also, I can't remember the exact numbers, but this, this paper already uh, also gave the, um, like a margin where over drilling is uh, like, a, or a threshold from, uh, from which over drilling gets really dangerous. I think like one millimeter, something like in the range of one millimeter, I can look it up uh, exactly if you're interested, or you can also read it in the paper. Um, of course, the faster, the better, and we, we can be a lot faster than a human could ever be with this technology. Yeah, that explains it. Um, thanks, Matthias. And there is a remark from Steve Patterson, which I found quite funny. He says, we should have your knocking sound from your presentation to acknowledge your talk. I must add not only your talk, but also all the activities that we've been organizing this summer school. So please join me in thanking Matthias for once. <laughs> this is not going to be the last time, of course. Um, yeah, thanks, Matthias. We can move on to the next presentation okay. then. Thank you.